What is going on guys, it's Modern Warfare here. Welcome back to another video. So we're going to be jumping into PS3 tutorials here on the channel, uh, starting with how to jailbreak the PS3 in this video and then going through in future videos showing you how to get the most out of your jailbroken PS3, like how to install games and mods, mod menus, um, emulators, homebrew and going online with the system. All that stuff is going to be covered in the future episodes. But right now we have to jailbreak the system uh, in the first place. So that is what we're going to be covering here in this video. So first of all, this will be a full tutorial on how to jailbreak the PS3 on firmware version 4.84 or lower. You can check your firmware version here by going into the system settings and then going down to system information right down there at the bottom. And as you can see, I'm on firmware version 4.60. Um, haven't updated in a while, but you can be on firmware version 4.84 or lower and uh, you're good to go thanks to the new hybrid firmware that enables a kernel exploit through the PS3's web browser, similar to the PS4 exploit, we can install the hybrid firmware and then use that exploit as a stepping stone to access the software flashing tools, patch the system, and then install the full custom firmware. So we're going from stock firmware to the hybrid firmware and then to the custom firmware. So stock to a tethered exploit, then to the full untethered jailbreak. Now, not all PS3s are jailbreakable. The original fat model PS3s, the George Foreman Grill PS3s, they are jailbreakable, but the PS3 Super Slim models, they are not jailbreakable. You cannot install custom firmware on a Super Slim 3000 or 4000 model. And uh, the regular Slim PS3s, on the other hand, most of them can be jailbroken, some of them cannot. So it's kind of a question mark whether or not you can or can't jailbreak those systems. Now the reason that some PS3s are jailbreakable and others are not is down to the minimum firmware version that that console supports. So your PS3 needs to be downgradable back to 3.56 in order to install the custom firmware. Custom firmware is kind of loosely based on that um, 3.56 firmware version. And PS3s can only be downgraded back to the firmware version that the console came out of the factory on. So whatever firmware was written to the console during its manufacturing that is the lowest firmware that your PS3 can be downgraded to. So if that minimum firmware version is higher than 3.56, then you cannot install custom firmware on it. Now, luckily, if you are on a PS3 Slim, there is a way we can check to make sure that the minimum firmware version is 3.56 or lower, and then you'll know that it can be jailbroken or not. So you're going to head to this website, ps3exploit.com, which I'll link in the description, and you're going to want to head to the Flash Writer and download the minimum version PUP. And this will download an update file. Now this update file does not actually update your PS3. It's just going to tell you what the minimum firmware version is. Okay, so you're going to want to get a USB drive and make sure the USB drive is formatted in FAT32 format. So right here it says File System FAT32. If it's not in FAT32, you'll have to reformat it. So back up any files that were already on the drive because formatting will uh, delete any files that are currently on it. And then right click, go to Format and select uh, FAT32 as the option. If you don't have a FAT32 option, it means your USB is too large and you'll have to either partition it into a smaller partition and format that in FAT32 or use an external formatting tool to format it in FAT32. But once you have it in FAT32 format, we're going to take this uh, PS3 folder and just copy it to the root of the USB drive. Don't put it in any folders and we are good. So all we have to do is unplug that uh, USB drive and plug it into our PS3. Okay, so once you have it plugged into the system, you're going to head to the settings, go to system update and go to update via storage media. Just click OK. It says minimum version check was found. And as you can see, it gives you the information here, update data of version 1.97 or later can be installed on this system. So that means the minimum firmware version for me is 1.97. So for you, as long as that number is less than 3.60, basically, if it's 3.56 or less, then you're good. You can install the custom firmware and you can jailbreak your system. If it's higher than 3.56, then you can't install the custom firmware, but you will still be able to install the hybrid firmware and use the WebKit exploit, um, which will still allow you to, you know, install Homebrew and do some other stuff. But obviously, you know, it's much better if you're able to install the full custom firmware. So 
there we go. We know we're good on that front. So, so heading back to the computer now, we need to install the hybrid firmware. So heading back to the ps3exploit.com website, and we're going to go to the bottom link here, the 4.84 hybrid firmware official thread. Click that and it will take you to the official thread on PSX Place. And then scroll down until you find the hybrid firmware link, which is right down here at the bottom. So this one here. So click that and download it via the mega link right here. So we just download. Okay, that took a while, but it's downloaded. As you can see, it's a seven zip file. So I'm gonna open that up in WinRAR. You can use seven zip as well, of course, to open it. And then we've got the update file here. So we're gonna unplug our USB and plug it back into the computer. So we're gonna open up our USB drive. We're gonna go into the PS3 folder. We're going to go into the update folder. We're going to delete the minimum version PUP file that's in here. And then we're going to copy the hybrid firmware one into that same folder, into the update folder. Okay, so once it's copied over to your computer, you're going to rename it. So it's just called ps3update.pup or updat.pup, not no E. So ps3updat.pup, that's what you want to rename it to. And then just unplug the USB drive and plug it back into your PS3. Okay, and once again, we're gonna to go to system update, update via storage media. You can see it now says hybrid and exploitable. So that's the hybrid firmware. We're gonna say okay to that. And it's gonna start installing the hybrid firmware. A user agreement will pop up. Just go to the right and then select accept. We'll just go ahead and start. And there we go. It starts copying the update file. Okay, so after the system update, it will reboot you back to the PS4's home screen and we now have the update installed. Now, if you got an error during the update that said something like um, an error occurred during the copy operation or it says that you already have the latest firmware installed so it won't let you install the hybrid firmware, there is another way to do the update that'll work and that is boot into recovery mode and do the update in recovery mode. So to do that, you're gonna to want to hold down the power button until the PS3 turns off. So once the PS3 turns off, hold down the power button and keep it held down while the PS3 boots back up until you hear it beep twice. And that means it's booting into recovery mode. If it doesn't work the first time, if it just shuts the console off, just do it a second time, it should work the second time. So once you boot into recovery mode, you'll get this message. So you'll need to plug in your PS3 controller to the PS3 via USB cable and then press the PS button. So then you get into the menu. So you're gonna go down to system update, press X on that. It says connect storage media that contains an update and then press start and select button at the same time. So press the start and select button at the same time and make sure that the uh, USB stick is plugged in with your hybrid firmware update on there. Okay, and it will be checking for a while and then it will start preparing the update. Okay, then you'll get presented with this. So you just press the PS button and it starts doing the update. Now you should install the hybrid firmware twice. So I have done it twice now technically. So I did it first on the PS3 home screen and now I'm doing it again here in recovery mode. So I am doing the system update twice. The reason for that is a lot of people or some people at least uh, were having issues after only installing it once with the exploit not working and other problems. So uh, just to eliminate the chance of, of you running into those issues, you're best off to install the hybrid firmware twice. Okay, so, so now that we have the hybrid firmware installed, we're ready to get everything set up to install our custom firmware. So first thing we're gonna do is head over to the network section and go to the internet search. And we're gonna do an internet search for HTTP colon double slash ps3exploit.com. And we're just gonna head to that website which is the same website we're on on the computer. Um, okay, it did a Google Google search, but I believe this is the, the right one here. Yep, there we go, ps3exploit.com. Okay, so we're gonna go to the flash dumper and dump flash to USB. Now, the reason that we're gonna do this, technically this isn't a required step, but if you don't do this and something goes wrong when you patch the system or when you install custom firmware and it bricks your system, then you're pretty much screwed. Whereas if you have a backup of your flash before you patch it, then if anything goes wrong with the system and the system gets bricked, you can always write your backup uh, flash back onto the system to get it up and running again. 
So it's important that we actually have a backup here. So we're gonna dump flash to USB. Now you need to know if your system is a NAND or NOR system. Now I think all the slims are NOR systems, but the fat consoles, some of them are NAND systems, some of them are NOR systems. So if you head to ps3devwiki.com, it'll be linked in the description, the SKU models. It tells you what the different systems are, which ones are NAND and which ones are NOR systems based on the model number. So you can find the model number on the back of the PS3 or on the bottom of the PS3. It's on a little sticker. So mine, just for reference, is a, a CECHM03. So I go down here to CECHMXX. And as you can see, mine is a NOR system. So check your model number against this so that you know whether it's a NAND or a NOR system. And once you know if it's a NAND or a NOR system, then select either NAND or NOR on the PS3 here on the flash dumper option. So I'm gonna select NOR because I have a NOR system and click OK to the message. So you're gonna to want to add this page to your bookmarks. So press triangle and go to bookmarks, my bookmarks and add this to your bookmarks. So now we're just gonna press triangle. We're gonna to go to file, close window and go back here. And then we're gonna to go to flash writer we're not actually gonna use this yet, but we're gonna bookmark it as well. So we're gonna write flash to USB and again, select either NAND or NOR. So I have a NOR system, so I'm gonna select NOR again, and then I'm gonna press triangle and I'm going to add this to bookmarks as well. So I'm gonna to go to bookmarks, my bookmarks, add a bookmark, and there we go. And then I'll go back and once again, close out of this window. So now that we've done that, we're also going to press triangle. We're gonna to go to tools and we're going to delete our cookies and then we're going to go to tools and we're going to delete the search history uh, again tools this time delete the cache and finally go back to tools and delete the authentication information and last but not least we're going to go to tools home page and select use a blank page and then click ok and now you can press circle to close the browser. Now, the reason we did all of that is to make the browser as lightweight as possible so that it'll be less likely to fail when we initialize the exploitation or when we're reading and writing the NAND or NOR. Um, we want the browser to be running as light as possible. So no cookies, no internet history or any other files that could slow it down. Uh, that is why we did that. So now we're going to go back onto the internet browser and it should just open up into a blank page. And from here, we're just going to press triangle, go to our bookmarks, and we're going to load up the NOR dumper. So the NOR flash memory dumper. And we're going to select that. And we want to make sure that our USB stick is plugged into the rightmost USB port. Uh, in the PS3, so the USB port on the right, uh, because that is USB 000, which is already selected for us. For the sake of consistency, have your USB stick plugged into the rightmost USB port on your PS3 and make sure the left box here is ticked for USB 000, and then initialize the exploitation. Now this may take some time and it may, oh, okay, never mind. It didn't take any time at all, um, but this might take some time to initialize the exploitation. But if it fails, then just try again. If it keeps failing, try closing the browser, reopening it, you know, deleting all your cache and cookies and website data again, and uh, just keep retrying. Eventually it'll work. And then you can dump the 16 megabyte NOR flash to USB device. So select that. Of course, if you're on the NAND system, the options are exactly the same. So you'll have initialize exploitation and then you'll have uh, dump your NAND flash to USB device if you're on a NAND system. So that is basically that. So as you can see, it's proceeding to dump the 16 megabyte NAND or NOR flash to the USB drive. So just wait until it says that this is completed because it can take a few minutes. It won't take very long on a NOR system because the NOR flash is only 16 megabytes, but if you're on a NAND system, it'll take a lot longer to uh, to dump the flash memory to the USB. But if you're on a NOR system, it shouldn't take too long. Okay, and there we go. NOR flash dump operation completed and we are good to go. So we can now uh, exit out of the browser again unplug our USB drive and plug it back into the computer. Okay, so back on the computer here, and as you can see, we now have this dump.hex on our USB drive. And I'm just gonna create a folder on the desktop called um, PS3 NOR Backup. 
and I'm going to copy it in there and then I can just delete it from the USB drive. Okay, so now that you've done that, the next step is to go back to the PS3 exploit website and we're going to go to Flash Writer 4.84 HFW and download the Flash hex file to your computer. As you can see, I already have it downloaded here. Once you've downloaded it to your computer, you just want to copy it over to your USB drive and you might want to just check to make sure that the file's not corrupt or damaged by verifying the md5 hash it's not 100 percent necessary again but again it's a good idea to do it just in case it is corrupted or damaged and then you try and use it and it will brick your system if it is corrupted or damaged so just to be sure if you head back on the ps3 exploit web page and click on uh, the 4.84 hybrid firmware flash dumper official thread uh, if we select that one and then scroll down you will find the md5 hash of the flash file that we just downloaded and you can copy it so you can just use like an online md5 checker um, if you just search for it in google online md5.com will do and then you just take that flash hex file drag it into online md5 and it gives you the md5 hash and then just paste the one in from here just copy it from the thread and paste it in here and as you can see, it's 100% the same, which means that the file is not corrupted in any way. Um, so it shouldn't be corrupted anyway, but you don't want to break your system. So you might as well, for peace of mind, you can do that for peace of mind. So now that we have that on there, we are ready to go again. So we're going to unplug our USB drive and plug it back into the PS3 in the rightmost USB port again. And on the PS3, we're going to go to the internet browser again. She'll load up a blank page and we'll press triangle. I guess we, we can probably delete cookies and website data and all that stuff again, but probably won't have to. So I'm going to go to bookmarks, my bookmarks, and I'm going to select this time. We're going to select the PS3 NOR flasher, not the flash memory dumper, but the NOR flasher. So I'm going to select that. Of course, yours will be called NAND flasher. Um, if you are on a NAND system. So there we go, PS3 NOR flasher. So at this point, if you have a super slim 3000 or 4000 series or a slim PS3 where the minimum firmware version is higher than 3.56, you should not continue with the following steps because it will brick your system either partially or fully. So please do not continue if you have an incompatible PS3. Um, you cannot go any further, but for everybody else, we can continue with the next steps. So now all we have to do is initialize the exploitation. And there we go, it was instant. And again, same thing applies if it doesn't work the first time, just keep trying, close the browser, reopen it, delete cookies, etc., until it works. And then we're gonna patch NOR flash memory, which of course, if you're on a NAND system, it'll be patch NAND flash memory. So we're gonna select that and wait for that to patch. Okay, and there we go, NOR flash memory patch operation completed. So that's that done. And you can see at the bottom here, it says you can dump the NOR now and check that the patch has been applied successfully. So again, we're gonna do this just to be sure that everything patched successfully. Again, you could skip this step and just go straight to rebooting and installing the custom firmware but we want to be 100% sure that everything was successful so we are going to check so to do that we are going to go ahead and exit the browser again and we're going to go back on the internet browser press triangle go back to your bookmarks go back to uh, the dumper again the flash memory dumper and we're going to initialize the exploitation and now I'm going to go ahead and dump the 16 megabyte NOR flash to USB again. Just as we did before. But this time it's been patched. So we've done the patch to the flash. And now we're going to dump that flash and make sure it has been patched successfully. So this is this will be a different one to the one we dumped before. Because the one we dumped before was the pre-patched uh, flash. And this is the after patch flash okay so now it's been dumped to the usb so what we're going to do now is again just exit out of the browser unplug your usb and plug it back into the computer again okay so now we're going to go back on the usb stick go back into that folder that we created with the dump.hex and i'm going to rename this to um you know dump 
underscore orig for original and copy this one into the same place. So we're going to drag this in here and I'm going to rename this one to dump underscore patched so that we have a backup of our original flash and our patched flash now. Uh, which is a good thing just to have them as a backup, but we also want to check to make sure the patch was successful So to do that we're going to download a program called PYPS3 checker So we're going to download PYPS3 checker right here um, If you go back to PS3 tools and just clone or download download as a zip file Now you're also going to need Python installed for this program to work um, so if you go to python.org forward slash downloads, again, it will be linked in the description. You don't need version 3, you actually need an older version, you need version 2.7, so 2.7.16 will do. So download and install Python if you haven't already got it installed. x86-64 installer, we'll download that. I have Python installed, but I have Python version 3.7 installed. I need version 2.7 for this. Okay, so now we have this downloaded. So this will check to make sure that the patch was successful. So I'm gonna extract, or well, let's open it up first actually, and extract the folder here to our desktop. And then we're gonna open this up. We're gonna open PYPS3 Checker. Okay, so now what you want to do is grab your uh, patched hex file and copy it to the same folder as PYPS3 Checker and then drag the hex over the drag and drop your dump here dot bat. Checks completed, so there you go. It says total number of checks, 155. Number of dangers, zero. Number of warnings, zero. Now, if you get a few warnings, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, but if you get any dangers, then there's a, that's a problem. You don't want to have any dangers. As long as you have zero dangers, you should be fine. Okay, so once you've confirmed you don't have any dangers, then that means the patch was successful. So we're ready to actually write our full custom firmware to the PS3 and finally have the PS3 jailbroken once and for all. So what we're going to do now is again, go back onto our USB drive. So right here, we can delete the dump and the flash now from your USB drive now. And you need to go on to PS3 update, delete the PS3 update.pup in here for, for the hybrid firmware that we installed. And we're going to grab a custom firmware. So going back to the PS3 exploit website now and going back to the 4.84 uh, flash dumper writer official thread. Down here, you'll see you've got installing custom firmware. If you select that option, click see post. Okay, so once you're on this page, this gives you all the different custom firmwares that you can download. So just select a custom firmware that you uh, that you like and install it. Make sure it's a CEX version, not a DEX version. The DEX version is the debug version. You don't want to use that version, uh, at least not yet anyway. So what we're going to do is uh, select one of the custom firmwares. So I'm going to select uh, 4.84.1 Rebug Rex. I'm going to select that version and right here i'll put the link to it in the description of course so just go ahead and download it make sure again it's the not the drex version which is the dex version you want the cex version which is this top one here um, and i'm just going to go ahead and download that now when i click that it downloads the zip file and the the actual file is not in the zip file if you open the zip file uh, there's just a text file and then if you open that text file uh, the link is inside the text file. It says, it says rex dash and then there's a link. Um, so copy that link into your internet browser and download the file that way. And then you'll have the file downloaded. Now, once you have the file downloaded, it's as simple as copying it over to the update folder in the USB stick. So we're going to copy it over there. Okay, and of course, you know the drill. Once it's copied over, you're going to want to rename it. So it's just called ps 3 updatepup and now it's ready to be installed. Now you can also install some homebrew now as well if you want. ps3exploit.com and we go back to the flash dumper slash writer thread. In here there is step three installing homebrew and there's a bunch of homebrew apps to install. Um, so multi-man's a good one to install so I'm going to go ahead and install multi-man or webman or so I'm going to download this just go for the base version. 
So I'm going to download the base version, which is just a package file that we can then install with the package manager once uh, the custom firmware is installed. So any homebrew that you want, just go ahead and download it just now and copy it to the root of your USB drive. So once you've got your custom firmware on there ready to be installed and any homebrew that you want, you can unplug your USB drive and plug it back into the PS3 for one final time. So make sure you reboot the PS3 before you install the custom firmware because uh, after we patch the uh, kernel, we need to make sure that uh, the PS3 is rebooted in order for that patch to actually take effect. So once you've rebooted the system, we can go to system update and update via storage media. And there is the rebug uh, custom firmware showing up. So we're going to select that and it's going to start installing our custom firmware. There we go, there's our user agreement. So we're gonna accept and start installing the custom firmware. And uh, again, if anything goes wrong here, if it says there was a problem during the copy operation or saying that it's already installed or something like that, then again, just update using the uh, recovery mode uh, like we did before with the hybrid firmware. So yeah. Hopefully you shouldn't have to do that uh, this time around. Okay, and then you'll reboot into custom firmware and you'll see you've got a little red PlayStation Network icon. If you head into the settings, you'll now have access to the debug settings. Uh, also in the game section, you'll have access to the package manager from which you can install package files from the internal storage of the PS3 or from your USB drive. So if we select standard here, we can install multi-man. Although it shows up twice, that's I don't know, a weird bug, but you can select either one, it will install it. And uh, yeah, that's how you install package files for your homebrew and other apps. You can install directly to the PS3. And there we go, install completed, and it shows up there ready to run. So yeah, that's basically it. That is how you fully jailbreak your PS3 on firmware version 4.84 or lower. And uh, stay tuned for future videos. The next video will be about... Uh, setting up multi-man and installing webman as well and configuring the jailbroken ps3 stuff like your fans being able to remotely launch games being able to transfer files directly between your computer and your console that's all going to be covered in the next episode and then we're going to look at stuff like installing ps3 games dlc updates uh, then ps1 games ps2 games psp games and you know modding your games going online with the system that's all going to be covered in future episodes so stay tuned for those so thanks for watching and i'll hopefully see you guys in the next video